Water is the most abundant substance in living systems, making up 70% or more of the weight of most organisms. Without water, life is impossible. Also, water is a universal solvent. In this video, we are going to talk about the functions, distribution, water intake and output of water in our body. Water is the solvent of life. It is involved in several body functions. Water provides the aqueous medium to the organism which is essential for the various biochemical reactions to occur. Water directly participates as a reactant in several metabolic reactions. It serves as a vehicle for transport of solutes. It is required for enzyme action and water is closely associated with the regulation of body temperature. Now let's talk about the distribution of water in our body. Water is the major body constituent. An adult human contains about 60% water. About 55-70% to 70 water is present in men and about 45-60% to 60 water is present in women. The women and obese individuals have relatively less water which is due to the higher content of stored fat in an anhydrous form. A 70 kg normal man contains about 42 liters of water. This is distributed in intracellular and extracellular compartment. The water distributed in the intracellular compartment is known as intracellular fluid or ICF. And the water distributed in the extracellular compartment is known as extracellular fluid or ECF. In a 70 kg normal man, about 28 liters of water is present inside the cell while about 14 liters of water is present outside the cell. The ECF is further divided into interstitial fluids. which accounts about 10.5 liters of water and the plasma 3.5 liters now let's take a look on the structure of water the water molecule has a banked geometry a water molecule is tetrahedron with oxygen at its center there is an angle of 104.5 degrees between the two hydrogen bonds and there are two lone pairs present on the oxygen atom. The large electronegativity difference between hydrogen and oxygen confers 33% ionic character on the OH bond. Also, water is a highly polar molecule. The body possesses tremendous capacity to regulate its water content. In a healthy individual, this is achieved by balancing the daily water intake and water output. First, let's talk about the water intake that is how the water intake by our body takes place. Basically, there are two sources by which water is supplied to the body. These sources are exogenous and endogenous sources. The exogenous water includes the ingested water and beverages and the water content of solid foods. The water intake is highly variable which may range from 0.5 to 5 liters. It largely depends on the social habits and climate. People living in hot climate drink more water because in such situation body demands more intake of water. The ingestion of water is mainly controlled by hypothalamus located in the brain. The metabolic water produced within the body is the endogenous water. 
This water is about 300 to 350 ml per day. This water is derived from the oxidation of foodstuffs. It is estimated that 1 gram of carbohydrate yields 0.6 ml of water. 1 gram of protein yields 0.4 ml of water and 1 gram of fat yields 1.1 ml of water. On an average about 125 ml water is generated for 1000 calories consumed by the body. Now let's talk about the water output. Water losses from the body are variable. There are four distinct routes for the elimination of water from the body. Urine, skin, lungs and feces. Urine is the major route for water loss from the body. In a healthy individual, urine output is about 1 to 2 liters per day. Water loss through kidneys is well regulated to meet the body demands, that is to get rid of water or to retain it. It should however be remembered that man cannot completely shut down urine production despite there being no water intake. This is due to the fact that some amount of water, about 500 ml per day, is essential as the medium to eliminate the waste products from the body. Now let's understand how the hormonal regulation of urine production takes place. It is surprising to know that about 180 liters of water is filtered by the glomeruli in the renal tubules every day. However, most of this is reabsorbed and only 1 to 2 liters is excreted as urine. Water excretion by the kidney is tightly controlled by vasopressin which is also called antidiuretic hormone ADH. This hormone is released by the posterior pituitary gland. The secretion of this antidiuretic hormone is regulated by the osmotic pressure of plasma of blood. An increase in its osmolality promotes ADH secretion. that leads to an increased water reabsorption from the renal tubules. Hence, there is less urine output. On the other hand, the decrease in the osmolality suppresses the ADH secretion that results in reduced water reabsorption from the renal tubules. Hence, there is more urine output. Diabetes insipidus is a disorder characterized by the deficiency of ADH which results in an increased loss of water from the body. The next route of water loss we are going to talk about is skin. Loss of water occurs through the body surface by perspiration. About 450 ml per day water is lost by perspiration. This is an unregulated process by the body which mostly depends on the atmospheric temperature and humidity. The loss is more in hot climate. Fever causes increased water loss through the skin. For every 1 degree rise in body temperature, about 15% increase is observed in the loss of water. Now let's talk about the root lungs. During respiration, some amount of water, about 400 ml per day, is lost through the expired air. The air is saturated with water and expelled from the body. In hot climates or when the person is suffering from fever, the water loss through lungs is increased. The loss of water by perspiration, that is, via skin and respiration that is via lungs is collectively referred to as insensible water loss. It is termed insensible because we are usually unaware of it. The last major route of water loss from the body is feces. Most of the water entering the gastrointestinal tract is reabsorbed by the intestine. About 150 ml 
per day of water is lost through feces in a healthy individual. Fecal loss of water is tremendously increased in diarrhea. Now let's take a look on the summary of water intake and output in brief. Out of total 42 liters that is 42,000 ml of body water, the daily water intake constitutes of an estimated 1500 ml ingested water and beverages. Seven hundred ml foodstuffs and three hundred ml metabolic water. And the output constitutes an estimated fifteen hundred ml urine, four fifty ml water loss by perspiration, that is via skin. 400 ml water loss through respiration that is via lungs and 150 ml water is lost via feces. It may be noted that water balance of the body is regulated predominantly by controlling the urine output. This happens after an obligatory water loss that is via skin, lungs and feces. So we have looked upon the functions and distribution of water in our body. Then we have understood about the sources of water intake and the roots of water output. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a comment for queries and suggestions.